Well, hello there, budding geography students. Welcome to the geography department here at Bar and Peveril. My name is Mike. Uh, I've been head of geography here for four years. It's a great place to work and a great place to be a student. So first of all, well done for choosing geography, uh, the most essential A-level subject that you could choose, I, I believe. Uh, and of course, why is that? Well, you learn about how the planet works. You learn how that interacts with humans and the planet. And you're able to understand how to manage that and how to manage these issues where humans and the planet interact. So, you know, it's an essential part of our life. It's an essential part of how we live uh, uh, day to day. And it's important that people study it. Um, so that's the first thing to say. Uh, secondly, you know, I'm pleased you've chosen Bath and Peveril. As I said, it's, it's a great place to work and a great place to study. And here at the Geography Department, we've got uh, a strong team of four well-experienced geographers uh, adaptable to new technologies and geography in the news, but with experience of examining and experience of academic links. So we'll be able to help you not only do well in your exam, but also help you become these geographical global citizens. And really, that is the most important thing. We want people in the future. You know, you're the generation that's going to look after the planet for our children, our grandchildren. So we want you to understand how it works. We want you to understand how it can be managed and we want to understand how it can be more sustainable. So with no further ado, let's have a little look at what Barton Peril is like and what you're going to be doing here in the geography department. So first of all, we started off with this you know, important statement here, isn't it? You know, we've already mentioned geography. It broadens your understanding of this natural and human world, uh, helping us address these challenges of the 21st century. These challenges are very, very important uh, for us to be able to manage whether they're challenges of climate change, whether the challenges of coastal management, whether there are challenges of geopolitical uh, links uh, linked to our present COVID crisis, whether we can manage the planet with organisations like the World Health Organisation or the United Nations, all sorts of things, all sorts of challenges to look at. So how can you get on this fantastic course? Well, you need to have done the basic studies of mathematics, English and geography to get in. Uh, you should really have a four in English, Math and Geography. We do have students each year that haven't studied Geography, but have done well in Sciences, and we'll be able to look at your application if that's what you'd like to do. The key thing is that you're interested in the planet and that you are, want to know how it works and uh, want to be able to manage these interactions. We call that for us a heart of Geography, something that really you know, you, you're interested in and that you want to find out about. And of course, Geography is special in that it bridges these two areas, uh, in British humanities subjects, so you'll be able to write essays and be eloquent and be able to explain uh, your understanding of geography, but it also links to sciences and you'll be able to analyse data and use mathematical skills to understand data. Um, and so we have that beautiful bridge uh, between the two. You know, you might end up wanting to look at how volcanoes work, look at that science, but you might be interested in the human response and management of those uh, hazards uh, and look at the humanitarian part of it. So it's this bridge. So people study geography here and they do science subjects, they do humanities subjects and they do art subjects. There we go. Uh, another important part of our course is that you get to do it, uh, this non-exam assessment. 80% is done with exams, but 20% is this your individual piece of work. So you're allowed to choose something as long as it links to our specification. You research it, you collect data for a day, and then you analyze this data and come to some conclusion. It's a fantastic element of the course, really follows on this heart of geography. You know, what are you interested in? What would you like to find out about? Let's collect some good data. We'll show you how to do that so that it's not biased and you collect it in the best way possible. And then we're gonna give you the tools to analyze this or to be able to find out patterns and so on. So that's a great start, isn't it, to our course. But what do we actually study? What is on the course? Let's have a look at that. So as you can see here, the course is split up into two types of uh, geography, core geography and optional geography. So the core geography has been set by governments and academic geographical bodies like the Royal Geographical Society and the Geographical Association. Why? Why do they want all geographers to look at these three? Well, let's look at the recent uh, COVID-19 pandemic and see how that interacts with these. So first of all, global systems and global governance. You know. In this unit, we look at how the world works, the systems, it's systems to do with trade, 
systems to do with movement of people, how these move across from place to place. And of course, this is how this uh, COVID-19 spread. It spread because we're in a globalized world. And to stop it spreading, we've had to shut down this globalized world with no air travel, a lack of sea travel. And so, you know, the systems have ground to a halt to stop it happening. So how do we do it? How do we govern globally? What difference has the World Health Organization had as part of the United Nations in trying to understand this pandemic? Can we do it individually as small countries? Do we need to work together? You know, were we all working individually for a vaccine for this? What's happening? How do we work together as a, as a global force? And really, we want students to understand that we need to work together in our, to manage our globe. So that's very important. Then we've got this idea of changing places. You will have seen that the places that you live have changed and your understanding of them may have changed over these last three months. You know, you may be more intimate with your local area. You may be understand your community a bit better. And as an insider, you may put to grips with that more. Um, and the, the place may have changed differently. Maybe more animals have come in and started to move around the, the area. Or maybe you've gone for walks in areas you've not seen before. So these places have changed. Our perception has changed and they may have changed. Will they change for better? Will after this pandemic finishes, will we live in places that are better for us, healthier for us? It'll be interesting. And of course, they've had an in, in, impact on water and carbon. I was watching on the news, uh, the South Today news, that we're, we now lack water. We've been using so much water for gardening and we've been using more water at home that we've got a lack of water because our stores of water are running out. How, do we, how can that be managed? What do we do? But on a positive, we've had less CO2 in the atmosphere. Transport has gone down. You know, is that something we can carry on? More people are cycling. In Southampton, there are more cycle paths. So maybe that's a positive that we're, we can look out for. So we can see that these three core are vital units. Then we have our options. Now, we've chosen these uh, options uh, as teachers. Well, why? Well, hazards and coasts, we really do those uh, because of their interest to us. Um, um, but also because we can link them to field work. Um, our uh, purely departmental um, foreign trip is always linked to a hazardous environment. So we've uh, traditionally early on been to Iceland, and more recently we've gone to uh, the Azores, and we've gone to Sicily. So these are all uh, volcanic regions, and they're great places to study these types of uh, options. Um, and of course, we live very near to the coast, you know, 10, 15 minutes away. So it's an obvious choice for us. To, and we've got a lot of industry linked to coastal management and linked to the uh, uh, yachts and boats and marinas. So it's an important thing for work, but it's an important thing to understand, you know, how to manage it in the future uh, with climate change. And finally, we have this wonderful unit, resource security, again, linked to our global unit. You know, globally, we're looking, you know, where it's to do with water and energy and minerals. How do we manage the disparity between there, where these resources are and where people are? And how can we manage them into the future, particularly these finite resources? You know, how do we become more based on um, renewables? But a lot of those renewables need rare earth minerals. You know, we need these finite resources to adapt these new uh, technologies. So how do we do that? A fantastic unit uh, that we study in the second year. And of course, we've mentioned before, these units are examined by two, two and a half hour papers, physical and human. But of course, they're they're really interlinked. Although we do physical and human geography, they're interlinked together. And you become, at the end of two years, more holistic, particularly with these larger uh, global units that we do in the second year. Um, and then, of course, you've got the individual field work, the 4,000 word, which I've already mentioned. So why else? Would, why would you study geography? Um, what is it that it gives you, apart from the fantastic study of those topics, isn't it? You know, in itself, that's enough, but there's even more. So first of all, it's a facilitating subject, facilitating subjects. You know, universities love geography A-level because you are both numerate and you are literate. And so therefore, it's, it fits in with almost all other options. So it's a, a highly regarded. So that's the first one. Secondly, employers love it, again, for the same reasons. You can analyze data. You're flexible. You can think on your feet. You can research information. You know, it's, it's a fantastic layer of skills. In fact, sometimes when you're good at geography, you don't even realize you've got them. And actually, you're very, very employable. You know, you, you do have these fantastic skills. We've mentioned, I've mentioned lots of times already, you've got this global awareness. You know, you're a good citizen. 
you know, geography departments are great places to be because the teachers and the students care for the planet they live on. We want it to be there for future generations. And after two years, you'd be better at doing that. We have good professional links to the Royal Geographical Society. One of our uh, teachers, Kate, is a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society, and she's a chartered geographer. And so with those links, we're able to uh, get some really good resources from the Royal Geographical Society. So there's a visit there and, and use that expertise. We've mentioned the trips already, very important. Um, we also do uh, uh, joint trips with business studies and law and economics. And we've been to New York and Washington for the last three years. And hopefully these trips will happen this year. Obviously, uh, with the COVID at the minute, we, we can't book those and sort those out. But as soon as they become available, it's something that we're going to pursue. But of course, we also do local trips. You'll be doing three days of field work locally, finding out about the local environment and collecting data and practicing and learning these skills uh, from that. It's a nice picture there, of somebody working there with their kilometers and a, a picture of these boys in the Azores. So let's just recap, you know, first of all, great subject to study in itself for two years, lovely uh, units that we picked for you, but also some extra elements that make geography a fantastic edible to choose. Uh, we do have um, this uh, link here, uh, that you can click on, which tells you a little bit more about ourselves and about the course at Barton Pebble. So welcome again. Uh, we hope you enjoy the lessons we've prepared for you. Uh, we hope you enjoy that. Uh, well done, those who have been working on the Google Classroom. I've seen some fantastic work already. Uh, just a reminder for all of you that you should be completing that work. We'll set our last piece, a hazard piece, uh, in your week next week. So well done. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.